van lifer goes missing, driver takes a fifth wheel through a Dairy Queen drive through and a motorhome attempts to drive under a low clearance bridge. It has been a wild week in the RV world. Stay tuned and we'll let you know the latest, plus some tips to avoid these types of situations and mishaps. We are Charity, Ben, Dakota, and Trinity. We decided we didn't want to wait for a life of adventure. So in 2017, we bought our first RV and set off to live a life of travel in the USA. We've visited over 38 states in three years and have many more to go. Follow along to learn all the best places to see, RV and travel tips, and much more. Now I know the first question you probably have is, isn't that the same shirt she wore in the last video? And yes, yes it is. I happen to really like this shirt. So just put your mind at ease. It's the same shirt. It's not just you. Now you may have heard or seen the viral story on Reddit of the driver that decided to take their fifth wheel of all things through a drive through at Dairy Queen. Yes. You heard that correctly. He tried to take a fifth wheel through the drive through at Dairy Queen. Now, here's just a tip. If you are driving a truck, pulling a travel trailer, fifth wheel, any any trailer really just don't, don't do that. Don't, don't do it. It's not going to end well. Now, why this particular driver did this isn't really super clear. I would just like to propose for your consideration that just possibly he was upset or angry that he wanted his ice cream <laughs> and that potentially the front lobby was closed and you only had drive through as an option. We ran into that over and over again this summer where fast food restaurants did not have the staff and could not keep the staff to open both the front counter and their drive through So they went to drive through only. And if you're an RVer towing a trailer or driving a motor home, well, taking those things through the drive through just isn't going to work. Take it from this particular guy that proved it, it's not going to work. When we actually tried to do that this summer <laughs> because we couldn't get the food that we wanted at a particular fast food restaurant and they wouldn't let us walk through the drive-through. So we literally had to disconnect the Jeep from our motorhome just to drive it through the drive-through to be able to pick up fast food. Now, for us, it's not as big of an issue. It's pretty easy to drop the Jeep and reconnect it. But here's a tip, if you must have your fast food, and they only have a drive through open. Check to see if that particular restaurant actually has an app that you can order curbside pickup. We did that several times this year where we ordered curbside pickup. And when you put in your vehicle, we just said the big stinking motor home in the parking lot, you can't miss it. <laughs> and they just brought it right to us in the motor home. And FYI and driver of the fifth wheel, if you're out there watching, just for your information, Dairy Queen has an app that you can order through the app and have curbside pickup. So there you go, problem solved. Glad that we could bring this solution to you this week for that. The next wild story we have seen this week was a driver who either didn't see the nine foot nine inch side or didn't know that his motorhome was not less than nine feet and nine inches. Okay, people, we have said this in many of our videos. So if you haven't seen all of our videos, now would maybe be a good time to go back to those first few videos and start watching them because we have said this in multiple videos before. Just don't be too super critical of some of those first videos, okay? We've learned a lot and we've come a long way, but needless to say, we've said this more than once. <laughs> that you need to know your RV height and don't take the manufacturer's word for your height. Get out on your roof, drop a tape measure and measure for yourself. And then we take it a step further where we actually print it out on a label, stick it on our dashboard because if you're in a panic moment of seeing a sign that says this is the clearance, you probably aren't gonna be thinking super clearly to know, wait a minute, how tall am I? How high am I? So. Having that right on your dash, you just look down, oh, here's my height, there's the bridge height, I'm good, I'm gonna clear this. There is a tip for you. Now, thankfully, from what news has been released, the driver and the passenger in this particular situation did walk away with some minor bumps and bruises. However, I would 
bet to say that the psychological damage was probably much worse than the physical harm. You might have heard of the missing van lifer that disappeared somewhere in Wyoming recently. The mother of a missing New York woman, Gabby Petito, who started a YouTube channel to document their van life road trip, has been pleading for tips regarding her missing daughter. She could be stranded somewhere in the wilderness and need help is something that the mother's thinking. And so she's really trying to get the word out and let everybody know to be on the lookout for her. So she's 22 years old. She was last known to be in Grand Teton National Park in late August, and that's when communication with her family stopped and her family reported her missing. So Petito had been traveling in a van with her fiance, Brian Laundrie, and documenting their travels on a YouTube channel called Nomadic Static. Now their van is a white 2012 Ford Transit with a Florida license plate that they had converted into a van with living quarters. And the texts that the mom says she received most recently from her daughter, she's just not convinced that was actually her daughter sending those texts. And now of course the boyfriend has been named a person of interest in this case. So of course, if you had happened to see this van in the Teton or Yellowstone area, definitely contact the authorities with any information that you might would have. But here are some things that we're seeing regarding this whole situation that are just practical safety tips when you are living a nomadic lifestyle. So first of all, a lot of these tips came to us from a park ranger, and we'll put a link for the video above that we actually did an interview with a park ranger talking about safety for our veers. But one of those things is to have a travel itinerary that somebody you know has. So you create your itinerary and you let somebody know this is where we're going to be and this is when we're going to be there and have a regular check-in so that you can check in with them to let them know, yes, you have arrived to your particular destination. In this particular scenario where she's texting her mom and not always verbally communicating, this is another great way to be able to just ensure safety by having some sort of code word or code phrase that only you and that other person know. When it comes to our kids, we have a code phrase that we use with them to where they know if anybody shows up and says, hey, I'm here to get you, your mom and dad were in an accident or something like that. If they don't know the code phrase, it's a no-go because we have that code phrase to say, yes, this is a legitimate type of situation. So be safe while you're traveling. Make sure that somebody knows where you're planning to be, when you're supposed to be there for your own safety so that if you don't show up, they know that somebody needs to send help. You'll have to let us know in the comments below what some of your thoughts are regarding the shenanigans in the RV world this week. It seems like a lot of crazy stuff going on. In our video from last week, we definitely have gotten some great comments. Finding Tina writes, great video. We are currently and have been in Oregon for a couple of months. Right after we got here, the bootleg fire started right in our backyard. We came from Central California, so fires were regular, but not really around where we lived. This type of information, especially being a new RVer, is always helpful. Thank you again. See you on the road. Thank you, Finding Tina. We really hope that all of our information that we bring week in and week out is helpful. So I'm so glad that you found that helpful. Nomadic Lifestyle comments. Can I ask where you got your shirt? Yes, I got the shirt in Yellowstone National Park in one of the shops in the old Faithful area. Thank you for the compliment on the shirt. I certainly like it as well. And Captain Skippy writes, as of September 3rd, 2021, Glacier National Park is not requiring reservations. I just called two days ago. So if that's on your travel route, looks like you don't need reservations for that for the remainder of the year. Don't tell Ben I said this, but he just turned 40. Four, zero. Shh, don't tell him I said it. Don't tell him, don't tell him that you know. He was frustrated with the fact of not being able. The mother of a missing New York woman, Gamp. <laughs> the mother, of, oh, okay. <laughs> who had been documenting 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 it's, this is the new, this is the southern news the mother of a missing okay hold on let me start over for the right yeah 
Thanks so much for watching this video with some RV news and happenings from the past week. We greatly appreciate it. We'll also have a link below where you can learn more information on our website and our blog. If you would like to see more videos with RV news and tips, you can check those out right over here. And if you would like to see more videos of fun places to travel and maybe some just bucket list type campgrounds that you probably want to put on your list, you can check those out right over here. Until next time, if we don't see you on the road or at the campground, we'll see you in the next video.